insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 127, Teens and Perfectionism. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my talented and dedicated and somewhat limping co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Limping. Limping, indeed. What is wrong? Why are you limping? Um, I had a bit of an incident yesterday at practice. Yes. Full contact marching band this week. Uh-huh. I mean, it was even bef- it was before we actually started, so... You learned to, to tackle the pavement, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you had, a, you had a spill during warm-ups. You scraped up both of your knees. One of them's uh, banged up pretty bad and, and bruised. We had to go get x-rays today and stuff. But fortunately, knock on wood, you didn't have any breaks or tears or anything serious. Yeah. So you should be back on your feet normally in about a week. Um, but uh, in the meantime, we've got you here for the podcast. Yep. So we're talking perfectionism today and the malicious cycle that it can lead us into. We'll talk about how we determine if someone is a perfectionist and the signs to look for. We'll then evaluate the causes of perfectionism and some of the negative consequences of it. And finally, we'll look at how to address perfectionism and what parents can do to help. But before we do that, I would um, invite folks, our listening and viewing audience, uh, to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of the podcast can be found listed as Insights into Things. We're available pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google uh, Podbean, Buzzsprout, and so forth. I would also encourage you to write into us. Give us your feedback. Give us your suggestions for shows. We're always looking for input. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all those on our official website at insights into things.com. Ready to get started? Sure. All right. So is your team a perfectionist? Now, of course, I'm going to ask you that after I read my part here, but, but let me read my part first. Okay. So this comes to us from a website called SciComm.net. Sounds like a government conspiracy site or something. (laughs) Kind of. They say it's perfectly reasonable for teenagers to have high standards and to work hard to meet their personal goals. Disciplined behavior can cross the line to perfectionism, however, when it interferes with social, emotional, or occupational functioning. The idea of being perfect can actually preclude teens from reaching their goals because it affects their learning process, both in class and on the field. Here are some common symptoms of perfectionism in teens. They become dissatisfied with the standard of work others view as acceptable or even exceptional. They procrastinate until 100% sure of what to do or how to earn a high grade on their assignment. They avoid answering questions in class for fear of being wrong. They're very risk-averse, avoiding taking any risks at all at times. They avoid starting tasks for fear that they'll not be able to do them right or well to their own standards. They often get very upset when grades are lower than anticipated. 
They struggle to cope with mistakes. They don't take criticism very well. They take it personally. They work slowly to avoid mistakes. And sometimes they fixate on neatness and appearance of work. And finally, they start over repeatedly to get it right. So before we move on with some of the causes, let's, let's kind of focus on these a second. So my first question to you is, do you think you're a perfectionist? I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this on the podcast multiple times, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm a perfectionist. And why do you think that? Uh, I don't know. I've just like had a lot of moments where like I've not been happy with work that you guys have been happy with. I'm overly critical about myself. I think I kind of fit the textbook definition of what a perfectionist is for the most part. So let's go down the list real quick here and, and, Pick out a few of these and see. Uh, you kind of touched on the first one here. You're dissatisfied with a standard of work that others view as acceptable or exceptional. And you've pointed out the fact that Mommy and I have thought the stuff that you've done. You know, you had a, a situation where you had a quiz recently. And you scored was a 94 or something on it. It was still an A. It was a low A, but it was still an A. Which... For our perspective, it's perfectly fine, but you were dissatisfied with that. How? Why were you dissatisfied, and how do you reconcile that? Uh, I'm, I don't, like, I guess I was mainly dissatisfied because I felt like when I learned the answer to the question I got wrong, I'm like, man, I really should have gotten that right. Like, I kind of felt as though I should have gotten that right, and my brain kind of makes me feel like I should have gotten that right and thus criticizes me for it. Well, and and I can understand that. There are times that, that I make seemingly silly mistakes that I just I should know the answer or I should know how to do something and I'm distracted. I'm not really thinking clearly that day or something like that. And I make a mistake. We all make mistakes. So uh, being overly critical of yourself for that is is probably not the best thing. But one of the things that we kind of try to strive for here is it's not about being perfect in what you do. It's about accomplishing what you need to do, but in learning in the process. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I'm fond of saying, and I've mentioned it several times on the podcast, is you learn more from your mistakes than you do your successes. So beyond that, do you exhibit any of these other characteristics? Like, for instance, do you find that you avoid answering questions in class because you're afraid that you're going to have the wrong answer? Yeah, that happens a lot. And what happens if you've got the wrong answer? Um, well, they kind of, like, move on. They try moving on, being like, okay, well, I like your perspective, but... And, like, at that point, I still realized I got it wrong, so... But they kind of move past that and don't try to, like, put too much, like, attention to it. Right, so they're not going to browbeat you over it. Yeah. How about coping with mistakes? How do you do with that? Mm-hmm. Not as well as I'd probably hope. Okay. How about uh, taking criticism? Do you take criticism... Uh, overly personal? I try not to in a lot of cases. Uh, your criticism, I definitely try not to take too personal. Um, for the most part, I don't really try taking too much criticism personally. It's just, there's one specific example where, like, it's kind of hard not to take it personally, and that's probably with marching band, because a lot of times, like, when you make mistakes, um, well, uh, the like I'm like I'm doing right now. I'm trying to fix this camera angle so we get the lights out of the camera shot. Anyway, but we're not gonna we're not gonna draw too much attention to that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, basically the that's like the only time where it's kind of hard not to take it personally because like because um they're kind of constantly like saying it to you and they say it in a tone that makes you feel like, okay, I'm screwing up. I don't like, but do this. they single they you out individually or are they doing it to everyone? I mean, they do it to everyone, but like there are certain things they single us out on, but otherwise we all kind of have 
We're all kind of like that. Well, and and I could understand in that situation because it's there's a synchronization that has to happen, right? Yeah. It's not about you've got 20 kids in a class that are all doing their assignments differently and they raise their hand to answer questions on the assignment. If you've got 20 kids and those 20 kids all have to move in sync together and one person is out of sync, you can't single, you can't not single them out for it. Yeah. Um, like I'm the type of person from a manager standpoint that when something happens at work, when somebody does something they shouldn't do, for instance, you got a lion under the table or something? <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, like for instance, if somebody sends an email that uh, they shouldn't send, you know, it's unprofessional or a personal email and they send it out and they use the system incorrectly, instead of targeting that specific person, I'll send a general email out kind of reminding people what the policy is. And I find that probably 70% of the time, the person, the offending person, sees that, understands what they did, and they correct their action. But there's that 30% of the time that they don't, and then you have to kind of go and address them directly but when I do that, I try to do it one-on-one. -on -one. I try not to, like, have a company meeting and then point the finger at someone in the company meeting. Mm. With marching band, that's different because everybody is really trying to do the same thing and work together as a team. Yeah. So I could see how there would be difficulties with that. What about uh, working slowly to avoid mistakes or to starting over again if you think you didn't do it right? Do you find that you're, you're – performance, the time it takes for you to do something is impacted because you're working slower or starting over? Um, probably has to do, that can probably kind of be part of what I do with my art because a lot of times, um, especially when I'm trying something new with my art, it takes me a lot more time to kind of get used to it. And I actually kind of procrastinate on it because I'm like, okay, I have no idea how to draw this. Maybe I'll just wait it out and see and like it doesn't get done for a while and then when I finally do try and do it it takes me a lot of time because I still have to figure it out because I still haven't figured it out because I didn't actually try right and honestly you know we've talked about this numerous times in the past I do think you exhibit a number of perfectionist traits uh, your results tend to be along those lines I mean you have straight A's so you're fairly successful at being a perfectionist, but as you get further along in your academic and your even your professional career, it's going to become progressively more difficult to achieve those high standards that you set for yourself. So it's one of those things that I think we kind of have to address now. We have to solve some of those things now. And uh, there's a lot of kids out there, a lot of overachievers out there. There's a lot of pressure on kids, especially around your age, to achieve a lot now, do a lot, get a lot under your belt because colleges are looking for a lot of those things, a lot of sports and extracurricular activity and social things and, and, and charities. You know, a lot of kids are trying to get all this stuff in, all the extra classes, the advanced classes, and there's a lot of pressure that colleges and the schools and the coaches – and the parents put on these kids. And then these that kind of pushes kids into that perfectionist mode. And they start putting that pressure on themselves. But it very quickly escalates to an unrealistic level. So let's take a look at some of the things that are causes of perfection. Why don't you, why don't you tell us about those? Okay, so uh, this part of the uh, segment comes from a website called teentherapycenter.org. So, a person does not become a perfectionist overnight. Perfectionistic tendencies tend to sprout earlier in life. Those with these tendencies start to correlate the approval of others to their own accomplishments. This results in drawing his or her own value based solely on the acknowledgement of others. Thus, their self-esteem starts to be based largely on external standards. This leaves perfectionists vulnerable and excessively sensitive to the opinions and criticism of others. 
In an attempt to protect themselves from such disapproval, they may decide that being perfect is their only defense. Let me pause you there for a second and ask you, do you feel that you tie your own self-esteem or your own self-worth to some of these external standards? Um, I mean, sometimes, because I do want people to, you know, still like me and think that I'm a decent person to be around. Um, so in some cases I do kind of feel that I would, like, kind of worry about the opinion of others to my own self-worth, kind of another example of marching ban is just like, hey, I feel like I really need to do good to impress all these people and to impress all these, all the judges and to make sure that, um, we're all doing good and everything like that. And, and that makes sense. I mean, you're literally doing an extracurricular activity that you're judged on. So there is a certain expectation there, but do you find that you get an excessive amount of criticism for your performances in marching band? I mean, we haven't really seen to heard too many of the judges tapes yet. Um uh And I mean, they do criticize us. We're obviously not perfect. Sure. Um So, I'm guessing we would probably get a decent amount of criticism. Um a lot of the times it's actually from the band directors, uh Mr. Porco mainly. Right. Um kind of just about like our performance because he knows the judges will notice. So. Right. Well, and that's kind of his job. His job is really to get because he's not out there performing with you, right? Yeah. So it's his job to get you guys to the point that you can score high with the judges. Um, and fortunately, he's aware of what the judges are looking for. And I'll, I, I can almost guarantee you, he's been doing it long enough, and he knows what each individual judges are looking for. And he probably gives you guys little hints or preps you for each competition that you do knowing what they're going to be looking for or knowing what some of the other bands are doing so that you guys can kind of counter some of that in your own performance. Um, so it's one of those things where that criticism is really a wealth of information to draw on because it's not just making you better. It's making you better in a way that's specific to what you're about to walk into. So, Criticism isn't bad. Criticism makes you better. Um, and, you know, we've talked before. I'm not the type of person who just showers you with compliments. If you show me something and you ask my opinion, I'm going to give you my opinion because if I don't, then I'm doing you a disservice. And Mr. Porco and, and all the other adults that are involved with band coaches and stuff like that, it's their job to make you better. And sometimes that requires pointing out the flaws because that's the only way we can fix them. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Uh, okay. I know I threw off your rhythm there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Several of the following negative feelings, thoughts, and beliefs may be associated with perfectionism, such as the feeling of the fear, uh, such as the fear of failure. Perfectionists often equate failure to, uh, sorry. Slow down. Perfectionists often equate failure to achieve their goals with a lack of personal worth or value. The fear of making mistakes. Perfectionists re regularly equate mistakes with failure. In orienting, in or, in or, in orienting their lives. In orienting their lives around avoiding mistakes, perfectionists miss opportunities to learn and grow. Fear of disapproval. Perfectionists often fear that if they let others see their flaws, they will no longer be accepted. And finally, we have all or nothing thinking. Perfectionists frequently believe that they are worthless if their accomplishments are not perfect. So the one thing that's, that's worth kind of touching on here is we, we talk about fear of disapproval. You know, where perfectionists are afraid to let others see their flaws. And we screw up on this podcast on a regular basis, I mean multiple times, uh, to the point that we start doing read-throughs of the script beforehand just to make sure we've got pronunciations down and we know what the cadence of the reading is and stuff like that. But even doing that, we still screw up. And I joke around saying, oh, I'll, I'll fix it in post, but I never do. And you know why I never do? Because 
those mistakes are us. You know, you have to own your mistakes. And then you come back next week and you try to do a better job. We're always going to make mistakes. And if we eliminate those mistakes, then we're really eliminating a part of us. Especially when you're, when you're reading from a script, the way that you read that script, the pronunciation, the cadence in which you read, the emphasis you put on certain words, that's your, your fingerprint. That's your personality that you're, you're injecting into the words that we've written. And when you make mistakes because you're trying to inject that in there, that's part of you too. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, when we do stuff like this and we make a mistake, you know, we'll joke about it. We'll go back. We'll reread the line so that everyone understands what we're trying to say. But we don't hide our mistakes because we learn from our mistakes. Perfectionists tend to perceive others as achieving uh, success with minimal effort, few errors, little emotional stress, and maximum self-confidence. At the same time, perfectionists view their own efforts as unending and forever inadequate. Anxiety, insecurity, and fear of disapproval may all lead to perfectionist behavior. So we're going to come back, take a little break, come back, and then we're going to talk about the malicious cycle of perfectionism. We'll be right back. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're talking about teens and perfectionism. And now we're going to talk about the malicious cycle of perfectionism. Perfectionistic attitudes set in motion a meticulous cycle. No. Perfectionistic attitudes set in motion a, a, a malicious, not meticulous. Malicious cycle. <laughs> okay, I can't. That's okay. Own it and run with it. <laughs> okay. First, perfectionists set unreachable goals. Second, they fail to meet these goals because the goals were impossible to begin with. Third, the, cons the constant pressure to achieve perfection and the inevitable chronic failure reduce productivity and effectiveness. Fourth, this cycle leads to leads perfectionists to be self-critical and self-blaming, which results in lower self-esteem. It may also lead to anxiety and depression, which we've talked about on this show numerous times. Now, perfectionists may give up completely on their goals and set different goals thinking, this time, if I only try harder, I'll succeed. Such thinking sets the entire cycle in motion again. Perfectionism is fueled by and fuels anxiety. From the outside, it may look like your teen is lazy or unresilient, lacks a work ethic, or simply doesn't care. But on the inside, a teen struggling with perfection may be fighting a daily battle against nerves, anxiety, and an intense fear of failure. The most important thing to remember is that perfectionistic teens are actually worried kids. Anxiety, anxious, well, okay, let's try that one again. <laughs> I got four different versions of that word in my mouth right now. <laughs> anxious thoughts are driving their perfectionistic behaviors, and when results fall short of expectations, they experience even greater anxiety. It can be a difficult cycle to break. 
Consider the role of external factors. It is no secret that teens are under increased pressure today. The expectation to succeed, both in academics and in extracurricular activities, puts an enormous amount of stress on them. Surrounded by constant evaluation and aware of the value society places on high achievers, teens often have no choice but to be driven by perfection, often to the detriment of the learning process. When teens strive to achieve, they are invested in the learning process. When teens strive per for perfection, they become paralyzed by the fear of not measuring up in some way. Perfectionism comes with stiff consequences such as low achievement, inability to focus on and finish tasks, anxiety disorders, feelings of helplessness, depression, and even social isolation. And I think one of the things that's worth mentioning here is that if you catch this early and you can break the teens out of this and make them understand that perfectionism is not a healthy cycle, it, it will be much more beneficial in the long run. Because what's going to happen is you're going to run into situations later in life where you can't succeed. You're not meant to succeed. A lot of times you're giving tests in college, in high school, and to a certain extent, but lesser extent professionally, you're giving given tasks that can't be accomplished, at least not the way that you think they can be. And it's the test is not about you completing the assignment successfully. The test is how you complete the assignment and how you handle the fact that you couldn't successfully complete it. Have you ever thought of that? Not really. Because a lot of times it's a test of character. Um, I've done that. You know, I've given people an impossible task. And, and, you know, you might think, well, that's not fair. You shouldn't do that. And the purpose of it was not to humiliate them or to frustrate them or to make them feel like a failure. The purpose of it was to teach them how to handle failure and to see how they react to it. Now, when I have a conversation with people, I'm, I'm always testing people. I'm always seeing what buttons they have to push. I'm always deliberately trying to get a reaction from people. And I, I'm sure a lot of people find that very annoying about me. But I do that so that I can see how people react. And I can see when you're under stress, you react intuitively. You don't necessarily react logically. And one of the things that I want to see is how someone is going to just react normally. You know, without even thinking about it. If I don't give you a chance to think. And when you put people in those stressful situations, that's when you really get to see that. So there are other people out there that do that. College professors will do this. College professors will deliberately fail you as a professor to teach you how to be self-sufficient. Okay. And a lot of people don't realize that. So they think that, oh, I've got a terrible teacher. Well, no, the teacher's being terrible deliberately to, to try to teach you how to how to how to basically learn without having a crutch of a teacher there. Um, so understanding those elements early on now where it's not always about success, it's about that journey to get to that success. That's the important lesson to be learned. And that's where you, where you get a lot of the knowledge and experience that leads you through the rest of your life. That was all we had for a segment, too. It was a quick segment. We knew that. We do have a lot more coming up in uh, our next segment. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this. And we'll be talking about what to do about perfectionism. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. 
look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about teens and perfectionism. So what do you do about perfectionism? Well, the first step in changing from a perfectionist attitude to a healthy mentality is to realize that perfectionism is undesirable. Seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? Mm. Perfection is an illusion that is unattainable. The next step to challenge, the next step is to challenge the self-defeating thoughts and behaviors that fuel perfectionism. Some of the following strategies might help you. One of these strategies is setting realistic and reachable goals based on your own wants and needs and what you have accomplished in the past. That was a really long title. (laughs) This will enable you to achieve and will lead to a greater sense of self-esteem. You should also set successful goals. As you reach a goal, set your next goal one level beyond your present level of accomplishment. Experiment with your standards for success. Choose any activity, and instead of aiming for 100%, try for 90% or 80 or even 60%. This will help you realize that the world does not end when you are not, when you are not perfect. Focus on the process and not just on the result. We talked about this already. Evaluate your success, not only in terms of what you accomplished, but also in terms of how much you enjoyed the task. And I'd even go so far as to say how much you learned from the task. Recognize that there can be value in the process of pursuing a goal. The next one we have is to ask yourself the hard questions. Confront the fears that may be behind your perfectionism and ask yourself, what am I afraid of? What is the worst thing that could happen? And I tell you that all the time. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen if you get a B on this test? You'll bring your overall grade down a few points, but then you'll have an opportunity to get them back up. What else do we have? We also have mistakes or opportunities for experience. Recognize that many positive things that can can only be learned by making mistakes. When we make a mistake, ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? More specifically, think of a recent mistake you have made and list all of the things you can learn from it. The final one we have here is avoid all or nothing thinking in relation to your goals. Learn to differentiate the tasks you want to give high priority to from those tasks that are less important to you. So let's look at how parents can support their perfectionist children and teens. I know it can seem daunting to want to help your child yet know, not know where to start. So here's a few things you can do to help your child make their perfectionism more manageable. We may not get away, get, get rid of it entirely, but we should be able to at least manage it. Educate your child about perfectionism. Talk to your child about it. Help him or her understand that perfectionism makes us overly critical of ourselves and others. This may make us unhappy and anxious about trying new things. Perfectionism makes it difficult to finish tasks and can be frustrating for everyone in the family. For younger children, you might not want to label it as perfectionism, but instead make up your own name that's a little more easy for them to understand. But for teens, call it perfectionism in case they want to find out more about it on their own. You should also teach positive statements. Perfectionistic children and teenagers often have rigid black and white thinking. Things that are things are either right or wrong, good or bad, perfect or failure. Help your child see the gray areas in between. Encourage your child to replace self-critical or perfectionistic thoughts with more positive, helpful statements. 
Have your child say these statements to him or herself whenever he or she starts to be self-critical or upset about not doing something perfectly. Suggest writing these statements down somewhere handy, on the home screen of their phone, a post-it, etc. Even if he or she doesn't believe these statements right away, enough repetition will turn positive thoughts into a habit and help quiet the negative self-talk, or it'll just annoy them. (laughs) There's also that as well. (laughs) There is that. You can help your child gain perspective. Perfectionistic children and teens tend to catastrophize. Mistakes or imperfections are seen as more terrible than they really are. They focus on the possible negative consequences of failure. In most cases, these feared consequences are unlikely and more, much more drastic than the reality. Understandably, catastrophizing increases anxiety and interferes with performance. Help your child recognize that one mistake does not equal failure, and that one bad performance does not mean that he or she is worthless. You should also praise effort. It is important to praise effort regardless of whether or not your child was successful. This is especially true for a perfectionist child or teen. Instead of praising the achievement, praise the effort and quality of character that was shown. Also, praise skills that are not directly related to achievement, such as sharing with others, remembering something important, playing well, or congratulating a winner. Create realistic schedules. Help your child by breaking down larger tasks into manageable steps. On a chart or calendar, write down the goal or deadline and work backwards, setting many goals along the way. Build in rewards for reaching these steps. Also, encourage him or her to decide in advance how much time to spend on a task. Remember, the goal is to complete the task, not to make it perfect. You should also set priorities. Perfectionists perfectionists sometimes have trouble deciding on what to devote their energy and effort to. Encourage your child to prioritize by deciding which activities deserve maximum energy and which require less. Let him or her know that it's okay to not, to not give 100% on every task or activity. And finally, gain balance. Perfectionists tend to lead narrow lives because it's very difficult to be very good at a lot of things. The goal should be to not invest more effort than is necessary to do a good enough job. Reassure your child that it's good to take breaks and take time to do things they enjoy. This will allow more time to enjoy with friends and on other activities and hobbies. It's also important to remember there's nothing wrong with setting high standards, but they need to be reachable with effort. It's all about being okay, human, not superhuman, among the best, if not the best. Perfectionism can be a curse, and perfectionists can carry criticism both of themselves and others. By setting standards at the wrong level, they're condemned to never achieve them. So with all that said and done, has any of this helped to give you more perspective on your own perfectionism? Well, I guess I'll kind of uh, go down the list here because we have a nice section list. Um, Educate um, me about my perfectionism. I mean, we're technically doing that with the podcast. Sure, yeah. So... I'm learning more about it now. Uh, Teach positive statements. Um, It's good to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. Right. Um, You kind of give me slightly more positive statements about like, hey, it's okay. You don't have to give 100%. You're still doing good. Um, And your motto is as long as you put in your best effort, like you achieved you're, you're good, basically. Right. I cannot ask you to do more than your best. And sometimes if your best isn't 100%, that's okay. The world doesn't revolve around 100%. It's very infrequent that anybody gets 100% effectiveness in the real world. And you kind of need to accept that and, and move on. Uh, help me gain perspective. Yeah, you've definitely tried to teach me that, yeah, um, just because you make one mistake doesn't mean that your entire career is completely gone. Like, um, 
with some of my quizzes when I don't get 100%, you say, hey, this won't really affect you that much in the long run. You're going to be fine. Right. So you definitely try to give me uh, that. Uh, You also do praise my effort. Um, um, You do still praise my achievements, but you still also praise the effort that I put into, like with marching band. Like, you know I'm not perfect on marching band, but you still praise the amount of effort I've been able to put into it. Yeah, and th- th- it's hard work. You know, that's why it was very important for us, you know, with this injury that you're going through right now. Mommy and I are trying very hard to make sure that when you're able to perform in marching band again, you can because you put so much effort into it. You know, you might get out on the field there and you might not march as well as you were before until your leg's 100%. But you've worked so hard for it that you should be entitled to it. Mm-hmm. So, absolutely. Um, set realistic schedules. You've been helping me with that. Um, you know, helping me reach goals in much more realistic in a much more realistic fashion. So, any goals I do want to achieve, you always make sure to help me um, reach them in a realistic fashion. Um, set priorities. Yeah, there are certain things that I should probably prioritize more a lot. A lot of the times with schoolwork, like, prioritize, like, certain things of schoolwork over others. Kind of like how I do with my homework. Sure. And then gain balance. With the force. (laughs) Yes. Gain balance with the force. Um, you definitely try to help me balance um, my perfectionist ideas with like just doing a overall good good enough job. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think for the most part, you've got a lot of the fundamentals down. You've got a lot of the how to do it down. You know, you break things down in the smaller tasks. You're very good with scheduling things and prioritizing things. So you've got all of these tools available to you. I think where you probably need to have a little bit more practice is the mental part of things, not being overly critical of yourself, not having to be 100% effective all the time and understanding that that's okay. I think if we can get to that part and you can use all the tools that you have at your disposal, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. I think you're doing pretty good. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts, and then we'll finish up the business of the podcast. We'll be right back. Go for your closing thoughts. Alrighty. So to everyone out there, I just wanted to say that perfectionism is definitely something that is a malicious cycle, and I know from experience how difficult it can be to handle it. We do, there are definitely ways to help manage it to something that's definitely dulls it down. Of course, it's not going to completely go away um, as we would have hoped, but we can at least um, quiet it for the most part. And if you ever feel like you're one of the only people that's like this, don't worry. This is one of the podcasts where I can actually relate to you, so yay. (laughs) Well said. Well said. Thank you. Uh, Well, before we go, I do want to once again remind folks that if you want to subscribe to this podcast, you can uh, get the audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all of our podcasts are listed as Insights into Things. And we're available anywhere you can get a podcast. Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, etc., etc. I would also invite you to write into us, give us your feedback, give us your suggestions for show notes, um, give us your stories, like, you know, the stuff that we talk about on the podcast here. Do you find that you're a perfectionist? Do you have perfectionist kids? Uh, write in, let us know. We'll, we'd love to include it as part of the conversation during the podcast. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can actually get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a monthly free Twitch subscription. We'd appreciate it if you threw that our way. 
Audio versions of this podcast can be found at podcast on the web. They can be found at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get uh, all of our videos on Facebook. We do stream on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can also find us on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can find links to all that and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our, our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.